the day has arrived. My box of incredible, amazing houseplants, some of which I've been wanting for months, years, haven't been able to find, is finally here. It's from Josh's Frogs, who I've done a video on in the past. I got some amazing, amazing plants from them in the past. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this open and see exactly what we have. Now, the cool thing about Josh's Frogs that I like when I found out about them is they mostly sell frogs, right? It makes sense. And a lot of the plants that they're doing are for terrarium use, but as a houseplant lover, you can just grow them right there. You don't have to actually ha be an amphibian lover and put them in a terrarium, you can just grow them. So here we go, let's go ahead and start unboxing. Oh my God. So our first one, and probably the most alien looking one, is Cryptanthus bivitatus ruby. It's a bromeliad, it is one of the easier bromeliads that you could really ever grow. Great indoors, great outdoors if you have the right conditions. It needs a little bit of that acidity in the soil, a little lower pH, a little more sand or perlite or something to keep it draining. It starts to multiply really quickly, so buy one, grow it, maybe put it in a wider shallow pot, allow it to kind of spread out and boom, you've got a lot of interesting little plants to add to your garden or to your landscape or just to your indoor plant jungle. Cryptanthus bivitatus ruby. Our next plant is Ripsalis venezuela. I actually don't even know if that's the right variety or cultivar of this. It's a very rare variety of Ripsalis that I, I think comes from Venezuela that Josh's Frogs had. I think they have one plant that they take cuttings of and propagate and, and sell. So you can see it is a very unique looking weirdo type of plant. There will be these tiny little beautiful white flowers eventually, and the soil mix, it needs decently moist soil. You can see on the top here, there's a lot of perlite. It's definitely one of the more unique mixes just looking at it. So there's going to be a really cool Ripsalis video coming in the future once I pot this up and put it into its new home and figure out exactly the best way to care for it. So here we have Anthurium Oaxaca, a beautiful, beautiful variety of anthurium. Anthuriums are gonna want shade, they're gonna want high humidity. If you were growing these in a terrarium, you'd probably put them in the back where they're a little more shaded and you really, really don't wanna give them direct sunlight. So what I'll probably do with this one is I'll pot it up. I may put a saucer underneath with some gravel and water to raise that local humidity around the plant and I'll let it grow up it's gonna get to maybe 20 to 30 inches indoors, something like that. So I wanna be aware of that. And it also produces these beautiful pink flowers that are just amazing, amazing looking. Anthurium's also known as flamingo flower, so pink flower, you kinda get where the name comes from. Excited to see how this one matures. So here we have two different types of Aglionema, also known as Chinese evergreen. Kind of an underrated plant in my opinion for the ease of care that these plants have. They're just so simple. They give you beautiful colors on these leaves. Sort of a translucent pink, which looks amazing. So this is the Favonian variety, which is definitely a more common one. I've also grown Aglionema wishes. Over here though, the showstopper in my opinion, you can see the leaves are much more narrow, elongated and pointy and the color is incredible. The red edging is almost like someone traced it on. And then you've got sort of a, a red and green speckling throughout, which is amazing. So these guys will grow pretty tall. They can get up to three feet tall. It'll take a while for them to get there, but moist soil, decent amount of sun, set it and forget it type of plant. So this little guy is Oxalis triangularis. Ebony Allure. I think a lot of people, Oxalis is a super popular indoor house plant. You see time lapses where it looks like butterfly wings flapping open. This one is very small. It's a small clumper and it will grow like crazy if you give it the right environment. I may decide to grow this in a wider, more shallow pot and see how it responds. See if it sort of just takes it over. I think it'd be very cool to have this maybe eight inch wide, three inch deep pot where it just sort of clumps and mounds because that's the growth habit that it really has. But the, the leaves look incredible. They really do look like little like dark brown, red, black moths kind of flapping their wings. And when you see how frail and how delicate they are, you see why they respond 
so severely to a lack of moisture or an abundance of moisture in those time lapses that a lot of people will do. So Oxalis triangularis, Ebony Allure. So this interesting trailing succulent leaf vine is Dischidia white diamond. It's an epiphytic plant, which means it cannot handle super moist soil. In fact, it, it prefers to not grow in much of any soil at all, although the mix that it's in now, it, it does have a little bit of soil. It's very high in perlite in here though. But this one, fantastic, fantastic plant. If it's growing outdoors, it's actually related to milkweed. So certainly an outdoor plant, but of course you can grow it indoors. You just have to give it the right growing conditions, which are basically don't water it too much. Give it a similar mix to like a Ripsalis or an orchid style mix and just make sure you are not overwatering this bad boy. Before we get to our very last plant, we have to look at Asara Maximum Panda Face Ginger. So the leaves are not why it's named Panda Face, it's actually the flowers, which of course we don't have here right now. But this is a fantastic indoor terrarium vivarium plant, but you could also grow this as a straight up house plant. It is kind of a ground cover, a low lying ground cover that spreads via rhizomes, which means if you think about how that grows in the wild, you have a clue as to how you might grow it in a pot. Low lying ground cover, lots of shade, decent amount of moisture, give it some room to spread if you wish. If you don't wish, that's totally fine. You can put it in whatever pot you want. This may be another one of those that a wider, more shallow pot could be a good option for it. Certainly you don't have to, but I think that's kind of a, a look I think would look really cool with this plant. So I may plant it in a big shallow and just see how it responds. Okay, our final plant and the one that I've been waiting to get for such a long time, Epipremnum panatum, Cebu Blue. And so for my Filipinos out there, you know that's a plant that's native to the Philippines, to Cebu. So I'm very happy to celebrate my heritage and get a plant that's actually from part of where I'm from, but amazing plant. It is often called the blue pothos or the blue philodendron. It's a fantastic, fantastic plant. As you can see, it's already starting to trail. And here's what's the most interesting about this plant. When it's young, like it is here, you have these more narrow heart-shaped leaves with a bluish tinge to them, which can be kind of hard to catch. But if you kind of look at these from the side, you get this metallic-esque, oil-slicky blue type of look to it. However, when it grows up to its mature adult size, the leaves start to split very similar to a monstera and it starts to become an epiphytic climbing plant in the wild at least. That's probably not gonna happen indoors. But if it's given those vigorous growing conditions, it basically looks like a completely different plant when it's an adult. So very cool, maybe one that I will grow out, take a cutting of, root that cutting, and then put it outdoors and see if it actually does do that epic transformation. So Cebu Blue, a fantastic, fantastic indoor house plant. Pretty epic haul of plants, guys. I would love to know which of these kind of struck you and you just want it immediately. I know for me, the standouts are the Cebu Blue, the Oxalis, and the Cryptanthus right here. So definitely three really different looking plants. Uh, and I'm just very excited to grow all of these. I would love to know what you think I should do with some of these. Let me know down in the comments. There's going to be a little pinned comment about a discount to Josh's Frogs. I love working with those guys. It's just a really fun houseplant company, in my opinion, although they're not really even a houseplant company, and that's kind of where you find some of these hidden gems. What's good for a terrarium, you can often mod and make it good for a houseplant situation, but the plant selection is different, so you get these more rare, interesting varieties, which I think is amazing. So, I hope you enjoyed. Good luck in the garden, and keep on growing.